Imagine a land where apex predators once roamed, where massive marsupial lions stalked their prey, and where an ancient balance between hunter and hunted shaped the ecosystem. But today, that balance is broken. Without strong predators to keep populations in check, Australia's wildlife is in chaos. Feral species run rampant, herbivores overpopulate, and smaller predators, never meant to dominate the land, now hold the top spot. Could introducing more predators help restore order, or would it create an even bigger disaster? Dingoes, introduced by humans around 4,000 years ago, became the continent's new top predator. But their role is controversial. Some argue that they help restore balance, controlling invasive species like feral goats and rabbits, while others claim they are a threat to livestock and even native wildlife. Meanwhile, smaller predators like quolls and birds of prey, though effective hunters, are not enough to control the explosion of prey species on their own. Kangaroos, unchecked by natural predators, have reached such high numbers that culling programs are now necessary. Feral camels, introduced for transport centuries ago, have multiplied in the outback, overgrazing the land and competing with native species. Millions of years ago, Australia was home to a lineup of terrifying apex predators. Thylacaleo, the marsupial lion, was one of the most powerful ambush predators the continent had ever seen. With powerful forelimbs, massive claws, and a bite force stronger than that of a modern lion, it would have been an apex predator capable of taking down even the largest prey. Then there were giant monitor lizards, including the monstrous Megalania, an enormous reptilian predator that may have functioned much like the Komodo dragon, using venom and sheer brute force to bring down large animals. And finally, the thylacine or Tasmanian tiger, a wolf-like marsupial carnivore that once thrived across the mainland. Before its extinction in the 20th century, it was one of the last remaining large predators in Australia, filling a role similar to that of a coyote or small wolf. Had marsupial lions or thylacines survived, Australia's ecosystem might have been vastly different, with natural predators keeping prey populations in check. But they didn't. And now, humans are left trying to restore balance in their absence. And then there's an even more fascinating question. What if Australia had developed an entirely different predator lineage? If marsupial carnivores had continued evolving without human interference, could we have seen the rise of a true marsupial wolf, something larger and more powerful than the thylacine? Could Australia have produced its own version of a big cat an even more advanced ambush predator that ruled the outback. It's impossible to know for sure, but one thing is certain. If Australia's natural predators had survived, the continent's modern ecosystem would be a very different place. The balance of power between herbivores and carnivores would still exist, and humans wouldn't be left struggling to control an environment spiralling out of balance. But of course, that's not the world we live in. Australia's apex predators are gone. And now, in their absence, a radical idea has emerged. If we can't bring back the predators of the past, could we introduce new ones instead? The idea sounds like something out of science fiction, releasing powerful predators into the Australian wilderness to restore balance. But it's not as far-fetched as it seems. Around the world, rewilding projects have successfully introduced predators back into ecosystems where they once thrived. The most famous example is the reintroduction of wolves into Yellowstone National Park, which helped control elk populations and even changed the course of rivers by allowing vegetation to recover. Could a similar strategy work in Australia? Wolves have been successfully reintroduced in places like North America and Europe, where they help control herbivore populations. In Australia, they could theoretically play a similar role, preying on kangaroos and feral herbivores like camels and wild horses. But wolves might struggle against an already established predator, the dingo. Dingoes are similar to wolves in many ways, forming packs and hunting cooperatively. If wolves were introduced, they would likely come into direct conflict with dingoes, leading to competition that could destabilize both species. Lions, tigers and leopards are among the most effective large predators in the world. They are strong, 
adaptable hunters that can take down large prey. If introduced into Australia, lions could potentially control kangaroo populations, much like they do with antelopes in Africa. Tigers, which thrive in a variety of landscapes, might find a home in Australia's more forested regions, preying on feral pigs and deer. However, both species require vast territories, and given Australia's arid climate and human settlements, they could quickly become a threat to livestock instead of controlling wild prey. Of all the big cats, leopards would likely be the most successful in Australia. They are solitary hunters, incredibly adaptable, and capable of surviving in a wide range of environments, from rainforests to dry savannas. They could target smaller herbivores like wallabies and help control invasive species such as feral goats and pigs. Their elusive nature might allow them to coexist better with human activity compared to larger, more conspicuous predators like lions or tigers. However, their stealthy and opportunistic hunting style could make them even more dangerous to livestock, potentially leading to widespread human-wildlife conflict. Hyenas are among Africa's most formidable carnivores, and their adaptability makes them an interesting candidate for Australia. Spotted hyenas are opportunistic hunters, capable of taking down large prey while also scavenging carcasses. Their ability to thrive in harsh environments, from deserts to savannas, suggests they could survive in the outback. A pack of hyenas could help regulate populations of feral camels, kangaroos, and even invasive livestock species like goats. However, their highly vocal nature and tendency to prey on weakened or injured animals could make them particularly troublesome for Australian farmers, much like dingoes. Their aggressive social structure might also make them a dominant force in the ecosystem, potentially outcompeting native predators like quolls or Tasmanian devils. Jaguars are powerful, ambush-hunting big cats that excel in dense forest environments. Unlike other large felines, jaguars are exceptional swimmers and prefer wetland regions. If introduced to Australia's northern tropics, they could help control invasive water buffalo, feral pigs, and even deer populations. Their strong jaws allow them to crush the skulls of large prey, making them efficient predators capable of taking down animals that many other big cats avoid. However, their preference for thick vegetation means they would likely be limited to specific areas rather than acting as widespread regulators of herbivore numbers across the continent. Cheetahs could play a very specific role as a predator of fast-moving prey like kangaroos. Their ability to chase down and kill animals in open landscapes could help control large marsupial populations in a way that no other predator currently does. Unlike other big cats, cheetahs are less likely to attack livestock due to their preference for wild game. However, their relatively fragile nature makes them vulnerable to competition from dingoes and feral dogs. Cheetahs are also low-density predators, meaning their introduction would likely have only a localized impact, rather than restoring balance across large regions. African wild dogs, also known as painted wolves, are one of the most efficient pack hunters in the animal kingdom. These highly intelligent and social predators are capable of bringing down prey much larger than themselves through cooperative hunting. In Australia, they could help regulate populations of kangaroos, feral goats, and even wild horses. Their success in varied habitats, from deserts to forests, suggests they could thrive in Australia's diverse ecosystems. However, their strong reliance on pack cooperation could make them vulnerable to human persecution. Like dingoes, they would almost certainly come into conflict with farmers, which could make their introduction politically unfeasible. Bears might seem like an odd choice, but certain species could theoretically adapt to the Australian landscape. Brown bears, which thrive in forests and semi-arid environments, could potentially fill the niche of a large omnivore. They would likely compete with dingoes, but could help control invasive herbivores. However, the biggest issue with introducing bears is that they have no close ecological equivalent in Australia's history. Unlike wolves or big cats, which mimic extinct marsupial predators, bears would be an entirely new element in the ecosystem, making their impact unpredictable. Their very diet could allow them to survive, but whether they would actively regulate prey populations or simply become scavengers would be uncertain.
However, introducing any of these predators would come with massive risks. Would they start hunting native species to extinction? Would they compete too aggressively with dingoes? Could they become invasive species themselves, creating an entirely new problem? There's also the question of human conflict. Many large predators introduced to new environments eventually come into conflict with people. Farmers would likely oppose the idea of introducing predators that could threaten livestock, just as they resist the protection of dingoes. Even if a predator successfully controlled invasive species, the backlash from human settlements could lead to mass culling efforts, undoing any benefits. So if introducing new predators is too risky, what can be done? Some experts argue that the best course of action isn't introducing foreign predators, but rather allowing Australia's remaining ones to do their job. Protecting dingoes, strengthening their role as apex predators, and reintroducing species like Tasmanian devils to the mainland could provide a more natural solution, one that works within the ecosystem rather than forcing a new element into it. Perhaps the best answer lies somewhere in between, a combination of conservation, rewilding, and selective intervention. Protecting dingoes while controlling their impact on livestock, expanding efforts to reintroduce native predators like quolls and devils, strategically culling invasive species without relying on mass poisoning or ineffective control methods. The future of Australia's ecosystems depends on whether humans are willing to step back and let nature restore itself, or if we will continue to shape the land based on what's convenient for us, rather than what's best for the environment. More predators could help Australia's ecosystems, but whether we allow them to is another question entirely. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.